Welcome to our lecture online. When you look at our next example, you may not believe that we can factor that. But you can always try by grouping, in this case, because there is four different terms. Let's group two by two and see if we can factor something that's common in each of the two groups. And then sometimes it will pop right out. If it doesn't, then it cannot be factored. So let's give it a try. So we're going to group the first two together and the next two terms together and see what is common between these two. Well, it turns out you can factor out an x squared because that exists in both terms. So then we have x squared times y squared minus 100. Now you take the next two and notice you can factor out a 9, but in this case perhaps a negative 9 because then we may end up with something that looks like this. So let's take out a negative 9, which leaves us with a y squared minus 100. And sure enough, notice this is exactly the same as this. We now have two terms that each contain the quantity y squared minus 100. We can then factor that out and see what happens. So we have y squared minus 100. And then what we have remaining is x squared minus 9. But we're not done yet because notice that this is the difference of squares. This is x squared minus 3 squared and this is y squared minus 10 squared. You can write it like that to make it a little bit easier to see, like this, and then x squared minus 3 squared. And of course, then it becomes clear that those are indeed the difference of squares, which can be factored as follows. This can then be written as y minus 10 times y plus 10, and this is x minus 3 times x plus 3. And now I believe we are done. That's as far as we can go, but that is the complete factored form of that original expression. It didn't look, it didn't look like it was factorable, but you would be surprised. And that is how it's done.